Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're replacing the factory doubled in touchscreen radio on this 2019 Toyota Highlander. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio. We'll head over to the bench, show you the new parts needed, including the wiring harness and dash kit. We'll come back here to get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get the factory radio out. It is a good idea to ensure that your factory radio has all the discs removed. Once you confirm all the discs have been removed, the first thing we need to do is pop this long trim panel out that goes all the way across and it includes the heating and air controls. Everything is just held on with clips. All right, we're just gonna kind of just set that off to the side here. Next thing we need to remove, there's a slight, small, thin trim piece that goes around the right side of the radio. It does have to come out of the way so it can expose the clips on the sides. Right there. Next, let's go ahead and remove our uh, heating and air vents out of the way. There's one. We'll do the same thing on this side as well. Oh, that one popped out. It's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts on both sides. One up here, one down below. One up here, one down below. With those four bolts removed, go ahead and give your radio a tug. Come on out. At this point of time, we're gonna have a ton of harnesses on the back of their unit. Each one's gonna be pinned differently, and they have little tabs that you press in, and it should release the clip from the radio. Okay, once all these harnesses have been removed, our factory radio is out, we can take this out of the way. At this point of time, let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. Okay, so here at the bench, the parts that we're using in today's install, first and foremost is the radio customers chosen to put in. It's this float mount nine inch Alpine uh, touchscreen radio. It's the ILX-F509. It's a nine inch halo, which accommodates a single din chassis with a big, nice floating tablet style screen. This unit features both wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto along with HDMI, Bluetooth, HD radio, everything like that. It's a fully loaded unit from Alpine. Now to accommodate this in the factory location, dash kit, we need the Pack International or AI. Uh, it's the TOYK990 dash kit. This accommodates both a single DIN and double DIN radio. So if you're doing a traditional in-dash unit, this will work for you. Or if you're doing a float mount screen, our float mount screen actually has a single DIN chassis. So we'll need the single DIN pocket included with our dash kit. Finally here, wiring kit. This is a really nice universal kit here for Toyotas. And this accommodates a ton of different models and it includes a ton of parts. It's the Crux SWRTY-618. N. Uh, this is for non-JBL. If you have JBL, we'll link that uh, corresponding harness in the description here. This is nice because it also includes your antenna adapter, USB adapter, um, and everything to accommodate the new radio while keeping all your factory features like backup camera, steering wheel volume controls, etc. Now, if you want to buy any of those parts separately like the USB cable or antenna adapter, we can still link those in the description for you. Uh, what we're going to do is grab the harnesses from this kit and the harnesses that came with our Alpine radio. And today we're going to be soldering up those harnesses and preparing them with some heat shrink. All right, so what we've done here is we've prepared our wiring. Now this is the harness from our Alpine head unit. And this is the Crux harness adapter that connects to the Toyota. But essentially here we'll connect it via soldering. If you don't know how to solder, we suggest at least using either butt connectors or even better crimp caps. 
Just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts. It's just not designed for an automotive application. Like I said before, we're going to be soldering and using a little bit of heat shrink. And uh, for the most part, it's going to be color for color. Always verify the function of the wire, that the function, not just the color, matches the function of the harness, not just the color. Because every once in a while, manufacturers will change colors and you don't want to make a mistake. So, let's get soldering. All right, so we went ahead and soldered everything up here color for color. We're going to move our heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink them down with the heat gun. Um, basically, it was color for color. A couple of things here, like our vehicle speed sense is pink on our crux harness adapter, but on the radio, since it has one, it's actually green with a white stripe. Parking brake, for example, is yellow with a blue stripe, where on our uh, pack bypass here, it's a light green. Uh, our crux module didn't have a parking brake available in the dash, so we added this uh, parking brake bypass. These are only needed for our Pioneer and Alpine units. Optional item, but uh, at least with our Alpine, in order to get into the settings, either need to find the parking brake wire in the vehicle or simply just put in a bypass. We like to wrap our harness with high temperature test tape after we, we shrink the tubes. Um, it just helps kind of route everything really nicely here. And then once we prepare our harness, then we need to grab the module here. Uh, we need to set these dip switches according to Alpine, and we'll show you what that looks like once we get to the instructions. All right, so we went ahead and finished prepping our harness here. Uh, this end down here plugs into the factory harnesses found behind the OEM radio. We have our antenna connection, our main uh, speaker and power connections, backup camera and aux connections are there as well. Um, we zip tied, tested taped it, AM FM is right here. We have our USB that's included with our crux kit that'll retain the main USB connection. Um, our backup camera connects to the camera input on the radio. This end pin up plugs into the radio. Our steering wheel control plugs in the steering wheel remote connection there. Now we need to set our dip switches and essentially you grab your instruction manual and essentially here we need to find Alpine and basically Alpine is listed as the fourth item so we need to set our first set of dip switches one two three and four as off 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 off. So if we look at this essentially here it's that same principle up is on down is off here what we're going to do here is set them all to off. They're currently all set to on, so we're going to put them all down to off. One, two, three, and four. Set to off. Now for Toyota, Toyota needs dip switch five through eight is off, on, off, on. So off is five, on, off is seven, on. Just like that. Our dip switches are now set. We need to plug in our Bluetooth mic, uh, but essentially that's it. So at this point of time, we can set our harness off to the side and then we can now assemble our dash kit. All right, so we got the dash kit assembled. Essentially here, it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, the, the actual faceplate bezel piece has the side brackets screw into it. There's three on each side. Since we're doing a single den, we popped in the pocket. If you're doing a double den, the pocket's not needed and you just break off these inner tabs and then you can mount your radio. Super simple. Additionally here, the it comes with great instructions on how to assemble that in case you have any other additional questions. So at this point of time, this is all assembled with our harness done and our dash kit done. We are ready to now head back to the car to get everything reinstalled. All right, so we're back in the car. Let's go ahead and first of all, grab our harness adapter and start making those connections. Everything plugs, plugs in to its own spot here. Okay, it looks like there's one harness that we just don't need out of all this. Now what we can do is actually tuck this just down into the dash here. It's also a good time, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and run your Bluetooth mic. So let's grab our radio. Now this does have a second USB port. We're just gonna dump that into the glove box just so it's accessible. We really don't need it though. Okay, now it's just the process of making all our connections at the radio. It's 
So all those connections are made. We're gonna just tuck everything back into the dash here. Now we have a lot of connections here. What we'll wanna do is double check everything's working. All right, so we got the screen tip early on just so we can make sure everything's working. You have to put the power plate on the specific Alpine model in order for the halo to work, but it's all working. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're probably gonna take the screen off, lower it a little bit, just a little more adjustability so it fits in this area a little bit better. Uh, but let's go ahead and put in our other vents here. All right, everything seems to be working. Let's go ahead and put our screws in, make our final adjustments, so we'll snap our heating and air controls back into place and do a final test. All right, so we went ahead and snapped everything back into place. Got the radio all booted up here. Really nice unit. Basically, it allows you to uh, integrate your steering wheel volume controls since we pre-programmed those, as well as the backup camera. If we go ahead and put it in reverse, factory camera comes up great. There, it looks really nice. And uh, essentially here, this thing has full wireless CarPlay, which is really, really convenient. Um, that's about it for this install here. Like mentioned before, if you like the parts that we use, we'll link them down in the description. The install parts that we use will work with both a single or double DIN. So if you do a traditional in-dash double DIN unit, this one will work great for you. We actually did an unboxing of this unit and demo. So if you want to see more on this Alpine unit, see the link in the description for that video as well. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button. If you liked what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.